and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we're going to talk about the uh, temporary bridges I use on my temporary layout. Uh, many people have asked uh, how do you actually make those and what make are they? Well, in truth, this is just Lego and I just uh, essentially built some pillars which I put the C-Track on top. Remember, I'm using the uh, Macklin C-Track. Uh, they are quite sturdy, so the only thing you really need to do is to uh, make something that hold the C-Track where they uh, where they are put together or where they are joined. Um, in order to uh, make the bridges, um, anytime you make bridges on a model train layout, you have to make sure there's enough space so your trains can drive under, right? If you see here, this locomotive here has no problem. If you look at this one over here, the electrical locomotive, if it has the pantograph up, it's actually above the bridge that you see here behind it. Uh, normally, this is not a big problem for me. Uh, because I do temporary layouts, I don't put pantographs uh, uh, or pantograph wires and so on uh, up. So uh, I really always drive with the pantograph down. So, and if you do that, it's not a problem. However, if you're making, uh, if you want to do the same trick, and if you have a layout where you actually have some uh, pantograph wire up um, or cantinary wire, I guess it's called. Then, then you would actually have to make sure that your bridges are slightly taller. All right, so let's look at uh, how do I actually make these uh, bridges and what you need to think about when you do this. Let's uh, look at how I make one pillar. So if we have the uh, Macklin C-Track here, what I basically would like to do is to have something that supports it here at the joints. The Macklin C-Track is actually sturdy enough. You see, you cannot really bend it uh, in any way here. So it's actually sturdy enough to hold the locomotives by themselves. I will caution though, if you're using some of the really, really long tracks, test it out before you do. I basically uh, use, this is the uh, standard straight track, the 24188. Uh, I have no problems with these. All right, if we look at the pillar, the uh, top part of the pillar here is in essence just made so it's uh, it's uh, five uh, wide here so it's basically just a plate I got here I just basically got a plate so that's a two times what is this that's a two times eight so that's a two times eight plate um, and then I basically just make a space that's wide enough for the C-track to fit in between um, and that actually turns out to be uh, five times two here. So if you see here, when I put the C-Track in, it actually fits perfect uh, within here. It actually will not move or anything. If I put uh, two uh, together, so here I have two, uh, two, four, one, one, eight. Then I will place uh, the pillar at the seam here. And you can see it actually fits perfect. It doesn't wriggle too much and so on, so it actually holds it in place. I would say it's a little unfortunate that it's actually a five um, wide uh, on the Lego uh, because it means that it will be uneven from side to side. So you see over here I have a two by two and over here a two by one to actually hold it in place. Now, I, unfortunately, there is no uh, plate that's just one wider here so you can have two to each side. So this is basically just something you have to live with. Um, then basically I just use a base. So we have a base plate here, which is a four times, what is this? Four times 10. So this is a four times 10. So it's basically just slightly bigger. You see slightly bigger than the plate I make to hold it. Okay. Um, and then the idea now is, now we just need some pillars to actually elevate it. So here I got some, um, I got some two by twos uh, that are round and those I will basically just put underneath the bracket for holding the track and then I will mount that on the plate. Okay, and then you see I got a nice pillar like this. In this case here it's uh, six high and actually normally I would go to seven. So let me just add the, uh, the seventh here. Okay, so this is the height I use. 
uh, with the track. And as I said in the intro, be careful. It may not be uh, tall enough, uh, if, especially if you have the uh, pantograph up on your electrical locomotives. All right, so I got this one here. Let me take a couple of extra ones here. So basically the entire trick is you basically put it at all the joints of the C track. So can we see it here? So I put it here where you see the joints. So I put it out here. I put it in here when see, so the joint is right there. So I put the pillar there and then I put it out there with the joint there. That means when I come with my locomotive, and this uh, could be a good way to test out things, find your heaviest locomotive, uh, although don't be too brave, maybe start with a less heavy one, but this is actually one of my heaviest locomotives, and see if it actually holds. And as you can see here, yes, uh, everything is actually sturdy. It fits well here in the brackets. Uh, there's no, even if I move it out, oh, sorry, um, out here and push down, it actually does not bend because the C-track is extremely sturdy. So in this way, that makes it very, very easy to actually uh, build the bridges. And as you can see here, I'm at a height now where my other locomotive actually fits. So what did I do? I built a bracket, I put some pillars in, and have a plate here at the bottom for support. And it's actually basically one plate, seven bricks, and then a plate uh, where the bracket is all on, and then some supports on here. And then you get a height that is actually uh, pretty nice. Um, remember, if you make it taller, then you'll also have the challenge that the uh, ramp or the approach up on both sides will have to be taller. So that's why I kind of went into the compromise of seven Legos high. So how do I uh, build the approach? Well, basically I, I do, uh, if we start with the seven pillar here, so the one that's seven bricks uh, tall, then I basically just go one brick down all the way till I uh, come down to zero, right? So the first one is seven bricks, six bricks, five bricks, four, three, two, one, and then no. Uh, bricks. Uh, you could argue, do you need this one here? Well, I do find that if I have this one here, even though, you know, it's just a little above the ground, it just gives an, uh, a more smooth um, um, joint between the flat and where it starts going up. So how do I do this? Well, if we take here the five, the seven, and the uh, And the six, so the six here is the center. We'll put it back here on the track. Again, always put it where the joints are. All right, you see, and now we get a nice slope going up here. And if we look at my, I actually have a little device here that can show me the percentage. So the thing is, this actually turns out to be uh, pretty steep. So this is actually, I don't know if you can see it on the uh, video, but this is actually 5%. So here I use the uh, 24188, um, which is the normal track. Of course, if you use others, it will get steeper. So if I, for example, if I use the 24172, it'll get slightly steeper. However, I've found that this is actually reasonable I'm doing temporary layouts. I do small layouts. I don't do extremely long trains, but I do do reasonably long trains. So I don't have a problem with it. And you can see it actually has a nice uh, smooth going up. All right, so let's try and move this over. Okay, because the interesting part comes, what happens here at the top? Okay, so now I put a seven so remember, this is a seven. I put another seven here. And I don't know if you can see, but you, it, it's a little above here uh, where it is. Um, and that's actually because um, the, the track just wants to go up. It's resisting a little to actually fall down, right? Because now it needs to level out. You can press it down. Um, however, you see, it, it's still just a little boundary here. 
if you keep doing uh, making track further out here to the left it will actually hold it down and then it will fit nicely however what you have to be careful about is you see here where the joint is now you have a track over here that's going up and then it levels out right here and this joint is uh, is just, I would say, on the edge of, of what the trains like. Um, so in, I, I usually find that this is not a problem. So there is 5% grade here and here it's level, right? So there's a big difference in the grade. If you find uh, when you're doing this, it's a challenge, well then consider you can make one uh, that's not a full block high, but maybe put in some plates instead. However, I have found that it's not really uh, a problem, okay? However, I would say I did find it much nicer if we are talking about where we start the grade. So where I start the grade, I would typically always put the zero in. So here we got the one with zero Legos, right? So it's basically just the plate directly. And then I would put the uh, next one in here. So that's the one with one Lego high we got there. And then we have the two Lego high here. Okay. So you see here, if, if you look at it, it will actually have a, have it out here to the right. It will have a very slight grade going up here because that's a one plate high. And then it will uh, go up into the first one here is probably not 5%. But the next one over here is 5%. And I found if you do this with this little plate here, it actually goes and, and gives a nice way to go up into the, uh, up into the, uh, to the bridge section here. Um, so, and of course this means you need to think about how many do you need to actually get up? Well, remember my tallest one, this one over here is two, but my tallest one is seven. So I need seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's seven, and then I need the zero. So that basically means in order to go from, let's say ground level down here and all the way up, I need eight of these and they need, each need to have a track. So that actually means there is nine tracks actually to go from the ground level all the way to the tallest one that would be a seven. So you have to plan that on your layout, right? So what about curves and shorter track? Well, generally I have no problem. You just need to think about where you use them. So if you have a short track like this, if you actually use that, um, so this is the shortest track, right? So this is a uh, 24064. Uh, when you have this one, if you want that actually between two pillars that has an entire Lego in between them, it will become way too steep a grade. So that uh, really will not work. So really, I, I try to plan my layout such that when I have to use all the shorter tracks, then it's only at a level place. Um, and that's really because I only have this type of, uh, of pillars. I haven't made any where there's any plates in between because you could actually make some various sizes in between, let's say a six and a seven, for example, if you really wanted to. I have not done that. I basically just try and arrange my layout so it fits. So basically for all the straights, uh, short ones, I make sure they're only uh, at a horizontal or a level plane uh, in the air, right? Of course, it would mean that your pillars would uh, get, in this case here, if I have the short one, it means that your pillars will get very, very close together, right? Um, do not be tempted to say, um, take two short tracks. If we take two short tracks, put them together. And then, so here I got two short and they're joined here. This will not hold. If you look at this, it actually yields a lot. And when there's a heavy locomotive, this will not hold. So do not do that. So the uh, rule of thumb is always have a pillar under each and every joint and then live with the uh, design constraints it makes uh, for your layout. So if we take these uh, short ones away, how about the, um, the curved ones? Well, I have no problem there. 
um, they actually fit nicely. Um, and I even must say, if I, do I have a six here somewhere? Uh, I don't know if I have a six, I have a, I have a five and a four. So even if I put those um, on a grade, and this one here is the uh, shortest curve. So this is the 24130. I usually don't have any problem with that either. I try and put here on my leveler. Um, you'll actually see that comes up to, well, actually right now it shows five. Yeah, it seems like it's, it shows five. I wonder if my leveler is stuck at five. Um, so it seems like that's about the same thing as our 24. Uh, 118. So I have no problem with the shortest or the tightest curves. If we go to the, well, if we take this one first, so this is a 24230, um, two, so the R2 curve. Um, I don't have any problem with this one either. Uh, and it still holds, there's not too far between the pillars either. Let's go uh, one more up, so that's the R3 curve. If I put this one down here, even this one here, we see this one is actually quite far between the, uh, the pillars here. Even this actually holds. However, now you see it is actually starting to flex a little. However, if I do put my track or my locomotive on here, it will actually hold. It's not entirely on the track like this. Um, it actually does hold and it does hold the weight. So I still don't see any issues. Uh, to be quite honest, I haven't tried with the bigger radi. Uh, for example, the radius R4, which is a 24430. I haven't tried with that one. So I do not know if that will work. So what's the lessons learned here? Well, as long as you got a decent uh, length track, there's actually no problem. However, uh, think about it, uh, or I should say there's no problem when you're going up or down the grade. Uh, however, if you want to use the shorter ones, then use them where it's more level, uh, because then you don't run into problems, right? And let me just see, just for the fun of it, how, um, how steep is this one actually? And here you see this is the uh, 24330. Uh, I think I said it before, so 24330, this is actually the R3. And you see now, the um, if you can see it on the video, the grade is only 3.49, so three and a half versus five for the others. So that's also a benefit in using uh, the longer tracks if you can get away with it. Here I made a little example of uh, a ramp and a bridge. So basically you see um, over here, I got a straight track going in, and then you got a turnout over here where you can fork off, um, where you can fork off to the uh, line that goes up here on the approach to the bridge, and then it ends on a bridge here. Um, now, what I've done here is I've just put in uh, each of the pillars at the joints. By the way, this is the 24130. So here I will actually end up with a grade of uh, just over 5%. Um, which uh, most locomotives will handle. If you've got really long consists, they will not. So, um, and as you can see here, as we get over here, there's a joint there, there's a joint here, but uh-oh, I have an issue here, right? You see the joint, if I just disconnect this track, actually ends exactly on top of the track underneath. And this is some of the things you need to be very, very much aware of uh, when you design your layout if you're using these uh, uh, bridges like this. Of course, what I could have done is I could uh, make uh, two pillars like this, and then I could put some uh, uh, Lego in between to hold it, and that's one way to fix it, and then I get exactly what I want. Uh, you could also perhaps just change uh, your track a little bit. So this is actually the 24188 um, uh, here. There's two of those. If I just replace those with the 172, then you would actually see that uh, it will actually um, look differently. So we take this, I just take these off here, and then I attach these ones, okay? And then you actually see, now it actually ends just before the track, 
And if we put this in, you will see that there's actually room enough for this actually to be there. Now this can be handy because now the next track here can stretch uh, very wide. And then I could have several tra tracks here underneath the bridge, right? So that's one way of fixing the issue. Um, you could also um, perhaps try and change some of the curved ones here. So if I put in a, a longer curved one here, right? So now you see I basically shifted everything, right? So this one that was here before is uh, 24130. Now I put in a 24230. Uh, I could also put in a 24330. Now I change the curb and you see it actually comes uh, in further before it actually will uh, go uh, in there. So now I just need to find my 118. I think this is the 172. Well, the easiest is to hold them up. Yeah, it's here. So, and now you see when I connect this, you'll actually end on the other side of the track. So notice what I did here. I basically just put a little mock-up down, which makes it easy for me to figure out how do I actually uh, make the track add up and how do I actually make it all fit together. So I've uh, put the pillars in place. Um, and if you notice something, I did actually cheat compared to what I said before. Remember I said nine tracks, so that would uh, include a track before the zero, right? So, uh, and then there would be eight tracks after that, going up to uh, a Lego with uh, seven uh, bricks, which I believe is uh, this one over here. Uh, so there's basically eight tracks. Uh, however, um, the first one over here, you can actually cheat. Look how short the approach actually is. So in, in essence, it's almost not there. So you basically typically need eight tracks to get up and to get to a level ground here. So uh, let's uh, try out and see if we can drive up here. I'm only going to drive slowly. So you can see that actually the locomotive has no trouble getting up. Um, and then, of course, uh, whenever you do a layout uh, with bridges uh, or inclines, uh, then you uh, need to test it out and make sure you can pull the number of uh, wagons you actually uh, need to pull. Uh, by the way, notice another thing. If I'm parked right here, you will actually see that the locomotive sticks out and it goes out over the brick pillar here, right? So that's why when I make the pillars, so let me just grab one here. When I make the pillars, I don't make them taller than this. You could make it taller. However, one more brick, and then you would actually risk that the, um, the, uh, uh, the longer uh, vehicles on top would actually hit this. If you look at this one here, it actually fits. See, if you have it here, you see the Lego itself is actually not taller than the track, which means that the trains will always be above, so you will never have a problem. So, good thing. Um, we stop there in the middle of the incline. We continue on, and you see it has no problem. Well, except uh, for dirty track, so I guess I have a dirty track there. See, it has really no problem accelerating up and, and going slow. So. Uh, absolutely no problem here. Um, if I take the other locomotive, then uh, notice... Oh, what did I do here? That was the wrong locomotive, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the wrong locomotive. Uh, here it is, the other locomotive. And this locomotive, we actually have made it such that it fit underneath, right? So we actually achieved our goal. We actually made uh, a bridge here where you can both have a locomotive under and one going over. And we actually did an approach here. And uh, it, it's probably hard to see on the video, but actually if you look at it driving down here, nothing moves. Like even when I'm going with high speed, everything is actually quite stable. And I have no problems actually uh, going up and down this incline here, even though it's 5%. By the way, this is to me one of the good things uh, with Macklin trains is they're typically heavy uh, and they got traction tires. So 
inclines is not a big deal. However, you always have to think about it if you got a really long contest. The final thing you need to be aware of is the peak. So here I got a, a pillar with seven Lego blocks. Here I got one with six. And over here I got one with six. So in essence, it's coming up here 5%. And then in essence, it should go down here again 5%, right? So that would, that would mean there would be a 10% difference here uh, at this point. And that simply will not work. You can actually see over here, the track is actually hanging. I can easily pull this one out. So that will not work. What you actually have to do if you want to do this is you have to have another seven here. Okay. And then in this case, you can actually have a six afterwards and that will actually work. Uh, so you really have to get up there. And that uh, is also why you might have been sitting and wondering a little about the numbers I came up with for how many tracks there are. We got zero here. We need to go all the way up to seven. In between there, there needs to be seven track. The reason I always say eight is there needs to be an additional one up here after seven that's at least level. I cannot just go down again. So that's where I get the number seven from. And in order to be perfect, I would also prefer a track here before the zero. So that's nine. So in essence, the grade itself is seven. Oh, sorry. The grade itself is seven. It would be nice to have something before, but as you saw previously, that can be a very short track. Um, however, whenever you come to the top, you need at least a track here to level out before you can go down again. And at the level out here, I have success with the 24188. It gets a little more strained with the 24172, but it still works. So I got a small setup here, a small layout where you can see I got uh, several rounds here on the layout. And then I got basically a bridge that goes here from this turnout. It goes up across behind this uh, train station or a small yard and then goes back down again. Um, I actually succeeded in, uh, even though it's a small layout, to make sure it goes up to uh, seven Legos. So if we look from over here, that's zero, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. However, you see it's only a six just before my small yard here, and then it's a seven, and this bridge here is actually a seven. Uh, so <clears throat> points I have to be careful about is what about here? Uh, can my locomotives actually fit underneath? And as you can see, they can barely fit here. Um, you have to be careful where you have the pillars here crossing uh, other tracks. So this pillar here, you have to be careful. That pillar there, you have to be careful. However, if we look at it from the other side, you see the zero is actually here. So I put it underneath uh, the turnout here. And this is a curved turnout. So you see it goes up uh, over here and here I actually got uh, from uh, one all the way up through seven is over here. So here I also got a curve. So points I need to uh, be careful about is, is also this one here where it suddenly goes up uh, from my curved uh, uh, turnout here as well. And then of course the two I mentioned before. So uh, let's zoom in on uh, these points and, and see uh, what did I do and how did I solve uh, potential issues? If we are looking over here, we can see I had some troubles uh, with making sure that I can actually put the pillars the uh, right place. So uh, this pillar here is an example. Um, it has to be here where the uh, two tracks uh, meet. However, as you can see, uh, that would also conflict with the track below where I got my lint packed. So in this case, as you can see, I basically just, um, let me just take it out here. I uh, remodeled uh, the pillar such that it actually would fit. Uh, and the good thing is that even though uh, it's Lego, you can easily change it. And you can see here, I still made sure that uh, even though the, it's, it's placed, uh, let's say, uh, uneven on the pillars here, so it would press down, then I make sure there's something to hold it here. And since this is the only pillar, uh, then it's actually okay. If you had a bunch of pillars like this, 
you may actually get in trouble. In the same fashion, I had troubles uh, over here, where you can see there's a seam here, and uh, actually uh, this track here from the yard was just uh, uh, be in trouble as well. I managed to move it just uh, one Lego uh, peg uh, to the side there, uh, so that it's barely resting here, the track on it, but otherwise it would be okay. So you all often get into situations. I could also, as I showed earlier in the video, have tried to replace with some other tracks. However, then the bridge here uh, wouldn't fit as nicely. And then uh, the, uh, the entire uh, curve and ramps and so on wouldn't actually fit on my little table. So I didn't have much uh, options here. Here at the beginning of the ramp, we have another point uh, that becomes uh, very interesting. So uh, this is a curved turnout um, and the challenge is with curved turnouts is you see the uh, two tracks are actually very close together uh, for quite a while here. Uh, I did put under here just a little uh, zero break or just one plate, Lego plate, just to uh, raise the turnout just a little bit. However, what is the challenge here? Well, if I drive my locomotive a little forward, you can see it. So. You see when we come to this point here, so this is actually uh, where the uh, turnout ends and the curve starts here. You see the, um, the locomotive, since it's long, will actually hang out and, and hang over uh, the, um, the siding here, right? Or if, if you wanted to turn on the turnout. Um, but it's already starting to go up here, especially also because I have the plate. Of course, this one here, the other side is also raised a little because the plate goes all the way underneath. But if you keep watching here at this point, you will see that it, it actually um, gets very close. And you can see here, it gets very, very close. Already here, the track is going up and you see it's hanging over here uh, with the wagons or the freight cars here. You see it hangs over a lot. So you need to be very, very careful with the uh, curved uh, turnouts. Let me go to the end here where I have just some slightly longer, um, whoa, one second, where I have some slightly longer freight cars. You see this one hangs in over a lot more. And you see this point here gets very, very close uh, to the other track. So as always, whenever you uh, do your uh, layout and you plan your layout, but especially when you're doing bridges and inclines, you have to make sure all clearances are good. So uh, just a tip here on the uh, LEGO website. So here I went to the uh, uh, USA uh, website in English. Uh, if you want to buy uh, any brick, so as you saw, I, I had uh, some particular bricks I wanted to use uh, for the pillars. Uh, you can actually buy individual bricks on the uh, LEGO website. However, it might not be obvious where to find it. So let me just show you. It's typically called a pick a brick. So you could uh, search here uh, on the LEGO websites for a pick a brick. Uh, however, where I usually find it is uh, here on the shop. And then you can go down to uh, the bricks and then you have a pick a brick. And in here, you can actually pick uh, whatever brick you like. So typically I like uh, something that's gray for the pillars. So you can go here to the color family. Let me just scroll up a little. And here you can see uh, we got the gray uh, uh, bricks and then you can actually see uh, what uh, type of bricks you want. By the way, don't forget you can do uh, further filtering here. If you want, see I hit the first category here. I only want the bricks. I don't want minifigures or anything else. Uh, and I might actually, uh, well, actually this subcategory I would not. And then here you can see uh, all the bricks. And that's the way you actually uh, find uh, that particular Lego brick uh, you want. Notice there's a couple of different shades of uh, gray. You can see it here in the center here of the screen. Uh, some over here to the left are lighter gray and some here are a little darker gray. Uh, actually those particular bricks that I have, I don't think it's necessarily available. I'm thinking about the round ones, but there are some uh, similar round ones as well available.
As you see, I have no uh, troubles on this incline and bridge uh, with my Danish uh, beer train, which is actually uh, eight freight cars long, so a pretty long one on this small uh, layout. And that's even though the incline is uh, just above the, the 5%. Um, as a rule of thumb though, 1% uh, is uh, perfect uh, for really long contests. 2% uh, incline is almost perfect. 3 is, well, okay, but now it's starting to get steep. 4 is steep. And I would say 5% is the typical limit you will uh, find on uh, layouts. Um, however, if uh, you really are making a big permanent layout, then you need to go for 1% to 2%. If you want everything to always work perfect, no matter what locomotive or consist, you probably need to stick to a maximum of 3 perhaps 4%. Uh, I would say on my uh, compact layouts, layouts here, uh, where I make them temporary, and as you saw the one I have here, I typically end in the 3 to 5% range. I really uh, hope uh, you enjoyed this video and got inspired to make inclines, even on your small uh, compact layouts. So the Lego makes it easy for me. Uh, I'm sure you could also use other things uh, like uh, wood or something like that. However, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the like button. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hit the little notification bell, such that you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Enjoy!